recording so I don't forget. And still admitting people in. Uh, we are recording. We have about 14 participants on at this time. Um, sorry if I go off a little bit because I'm letting people in, but welcome for those who have joined to the Women's Society of Cyber Jitsu. We empower, network, and lead. We are a national 501c cybersecurity community advancing women and girls in cyber. Um, we have chapters in Southern California, and we have Mary Wang, the chapter leader, on. We have the Vegas chapter, the uh, um, DMV, which I think is N Nova, maybe, East Carolina, which Dr. William represents the Southeast, um, she's the Southeast Regional Director, and um supports east carolina a lot right and jacksonville florida which is this chapter thank you all for joining uh, atlanta dominique you're providing the zoom thank you we have new york city we have virtual we have a new chapter in dallas texas just starting up so um great that we're um expanding I started this chapter in um, June of last year, uh, 2019, I think it was. What year is this? <laughs> and uh, we provide hands-on training. Um, I've had two workshops this year. One was in person and one was online. So that was great. Um, we provide discounts on training. We have networking events. We had a Cyber Jitsu Con, which was our first one for the year, um, and first one ever, sorry. And um, we provide continuing education, leadership opportunities, and of course, volunteer. It's a volunteer organization. Um, so today, I'd like to thank the members who have um, joined as well as um, some non-members. So if you're a non-member and you um, have time in the future and you want to join, there's lots of activities going on. Everything's virtual, of course. And um, I'd like to thank um, Dominique, um, Crystal Williams, um, Nakia, these are our volunteers that are running chapters and also D, I'm going to screw it up, D, D Bourgeois and the, say it D. Bourgeois. Bourgeois. See, I could even say it 10 minutes later. And she is my, um, operational lead for Jacksonville and I am so excited that um, she is still here with me. <laughs> still a few people are joining. Hello everyone. Um, I just went through the opening slide and now um, I have the great pleasure to introduce Tangela Davis. Um, and it's Tangela. Tangela, sorry. Thank mm -hmm. you. I see. I'm terrible with um, names. I'm from it's New York. Okay. <laughs> and Tangela, and um, we have the effective resume writing today. So I'm going to make Tangela the host. And. Now, if you got that, yes, and yes. take it away. Yeah. Let me go ahead and um, pull up my document. So I need to stop sharing. Mm -hmm. um, before we get started, is the waiting room still open? Or is, is it open for people to just join or is there a waiting room? Um, 
There's a waiting room. Did I lose it? I think when you give Tangela the host um, um, privileges, so it, it might be helpful to open it if she's not going to, because we don't want her to manage it while she's it, doing yeah. it. Because a couple okay. people messaged me that they're um, waiting. So we okay. could, um, Tangela, if you don't mind just giving it back to Vicky real quick, Vicky can open it or either or can open it. <laughs> and then we can go ahead and get started. So that way you won't be interrupted. Okay. So I lost the waiting room, I think is what happened. So hold on, give me one second. Um, boom. All right. Let's do this. And we're good to go. Tangela, I'm going to pass it back to you. And then you can go ahead and get started. Thanks, Dominique. No problem. All right, we're good to go. Okay. Uh, Vicki, are we ready to get started? Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, listen, everybody, welcome to today's Effective Resume Writing Webinar. I'd like to first thank Vicki and uh, Crystal for uh, inviting me to share with their uh, members. And um, this is a area that is uh, very near and dear to my heart. And just to kind of give you some background information about who I am, I'm Tangela Davis. I'm actually the CEO of Trinity Strategic Consulting. We are an IT consulting firm and we've been in business for 17 years. We're located in the Charlotte, North Carolina metro area. Um, my former life prior to owning my business, I was an HR executive in corporate America. I spent a great deal of time in commercial real estate as well as uh, financial banking industry. And we did a, just a ton of mergers and acquisitions in both industries. And so uh, HR and IT is, in my blood because uh, the, the work that we did uh, consisted primarily of HR and IT. And so cybersecurity, the security of our infrastructure and things of that nature. And I oftentimes laugh because uh, in the earlier part of my career, I was all of the above, HR and IT um, for the various uh, locations that um, I was affiliated with. But nevertheless, when I started my business, uh, it started out uh, with business HR consulting and quickly morphed into IT, pure IT consulting because our client needs, um, it shifted. And so uh, what we do today is support our clients with uh, mobile app development, things of that nature. And so we came into 2020 um, big time where uh, there were massive layoffs, um, actually larger than what we had experienced with 9-11, which uh, obviously for those of you that were old enough to remember that date, uh, there were massive layoffs that occurred during that time. Um, however, due to uh, COVID-19, uh, we're seeing it was a global impact, not just a uh, United States impact. So because of my HR background and understanding and having done end-to-end -end, uh, recruiting from the C-suite CEO all the way down to the janitor, I understand um, the nuts and bolts of what hiring managers are looking for as well as uh, what it takes to really uh, build out a high uh, quality resume. And so what we did in our practice, we expanded our IT technical services to include resume writing services in our business. And uh, what we have seen, uh, where we thought we were gonna get quite an influx of um, of those that were downsized as a result of COVID-19 ended up being executives and professionals like yourself uh, who were interested in getting their resumes revamped. So 
uh, that is who our target is because that appears to be the greatest, the greatest need. And I will also share with you, and we're gonna get into the mission and the objective of a resume, but we're not a cookie cut resume company. Um, and we'll talk about the objective. So the thing that I'd like for everyone to, to hopefully walk away as a result of this webinar is to understand the true value of not only investing in yourself, uh, in your career, by ways and means of your resume, but just truly understand how powerful the resume is for you. Um, and I can speak not only because we do this in, in the business, but because I personally adopted what I'm about to share with you, not only in my own career, but also this has been passed along and shared to those that, that, that I love, and they've gone on to be extremely successful in their career. I'm not saying the resume is what made them successful, but you're gonna understand in a moment um, what the resume does enable you to do as it relates to your career and your lifestyle. So without further ado, um, before we kick things off, are there any questions? Because one of the things that I'd like to have this session be is an open forum where you can uh, engage and ask me questions. Obviously at the very end, um, there's gonna be time enough for you to ask just about every, any and every question that you desire to ask. But as we are going along um, and having our discussion, um, I want you to feel comfortable and informal and, and just engage and ask me questions as we're going along. Are there any questions at this time? I'm good. I see everybody's muted, so. Right, right, but um, I am looking forward to it, so sure, let's go. All right, well, let's get started, everyone. Okay, um, the first thing that I want to get started with, and, and my presentation is moving slow here for whatever reason. Let's get started again. I think it closed out. Can you guys still see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. All right, let's get started with the agenda. Um, I wanna make sure, I'm, I'm seeing part of the dashboard of the participants, but are you guys seeing the same thing? Can you see my full presentation, my, my full slide? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. All right, so our agenda for today, we have, um, we've already had our welcome. Um, I'm, we're gonna kind of give gave you an overview of what we're gonna be talking about today. Uh, some important key things that we're gonna cover will include what a resume is not. Um, I've often found that people uh, think of resume as a certain thing and it truly is. And we're gonna talk about some of the key resume attributes to wire your audience. And we talk about audience those that are relevant in uh, reviewing your resume and making a decision about picking up the phone or shooting you an email to, to engage you for an interview. We're going to talk about some of your resume career transition qualities. Uh, you, we may have folks in the audience that, that you're currently in a career, you've been in one for a long time, and you're thinking about transitioning to a different career. Um, and what that would sort of look like in shaping your resume. Uh, we'll also get into uh, tools to support your resume submission because there are supplemental things that are often uh, requested or required during your resume submission. And I just wanna touch on that a little bit so you can be prepared. And then obviously uh, we've talked about how we want the Q&A to kind of go how we want that to kind of run along as we go through the, um, the slides and then we'll have a wrap up. Um, let's talk a little bit about the resume objective. Um, it's really quite simple, everyone. It is an investment in your career and self. Uh, it's designed and developed to land the interview and never forget that. That is one of the key purposes of your resume, but more importantly, 
And most people don't think about their resume this way. So this is a shift in thinking, uh, a shift in the mindset, but it is the means to the career job that will provide the income for the lifestyle that you desire. And so what do I mean by that? Um, so let's start with the investment in your career and self. When we talk about the career in your uh, investment in your career and self, most people, when they get a resume, um, either they're doing it themselves and they're throwing stuff together, uh, more of a chronological resume where they're putting in uh, the previous jobs that they've held, the dates that they worked, the company, and, and just a job description. Um, but it's much more than that, and we're going to cover why it is an investment and why you should be viewing it as an investment. Just like you invest in a vehicle that will take you to point A to point B, that will take you to work, to the grocery store, to pick the kids up from daycare, um, your resume is an investment. Uh, the design and the development of your resume should be presented in a way that it will put you in the greatest position to land the interview. Not just to put words on paper and present it to someone. Um, and then when we talk about the means to the career and job, I'd like for you to think of it this way. Everything that you desire in your lifestyle or in your life in most cases cost money. And the way you go about earning that money is typically driven by the work that you perform and you get paid for. So in order for you to get that job or that career that you desire, that's gonna provide you with that income, that resume is the springboard to help land you that interview to, to sell yourself and to provide your value to that future employer as to why you are the best one for the job. And so that's how I want you to begin to think of, think of this. Just like you may invest in trainings, um, just like you invested in your education to go to college, all those things, your professional development, you should be investing in your resume. And so uh, we'll talk too that the resume, the high quality resume, it can't be done in, in a half an hour, an hour. Um, there is a lot that goes into it. And um, we're going to talk about what some of those elements are. Let's go ahead and get into what a resume is not. Um, and I've mentioned some of this already. A resume is not a job description with just listing your responsibilities. How many of you, and you can speak up and, and engage with me on this, how many of you feel like your resume right now is a job description? And few don't people say, few people are putting in the chat, guilty. <laughs> Let's see if I can get- I definitely would say somewhat. Let's see. I, I think that's gonna it's gonna interfere with my. Um... I'll I'll call it out. Um, <sighs> some people said it's you know got sort of a combination. I think most people are, are saying. Guilty. guilty. I'm looking at it now. Yeah. <laughs> some says a combination. Both agreed. I have to tell everyone that um, just about all the resumes that we've seen or come through have been a job description. And the thing that we talk about a job description, it, most resumes include what you were supposed to be doing in your role. Uh, also, a resume is not an autobiography. How many of you have seen resumes where it seems like somebody is telling the story about their entire life? Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. I see an overwhelming yes here. <laughs> Also, guys, it's not about your aspirations. It's not about the employees. They don't care about they hold the key to your dreams. <laughs> they care about you holding the key to their dreams. And that is very important for you guys to remember. It is, yes, it's about you in terms of your value proposition and what you have 
listed on your resume, but it's by design that that value is, is all about how are you going to help that company, that employer, accomplish their aspirations and dreams. Because at the end of the day, when you help them do that, it's going to be an automatic win that your dreams and aspirations are going to come true too. Um, it's not an employment application. How many of you seen resumes where it appeared that it was an employment application? Yes, I've seen that too. And so employers, they have their own applications at or around the first interview. You know, that is something that they typically will have you do during the first interview. Um, how many of you have seen where oh my gosh, I have to do this application. I've already submitted information about my resume already. I, and they want you to put it in again because it becomes a legal binding document as it relates to that you are testing that what you've shared with them is, is true. Um, and so that is one of the things that, um, you know, we see as well. And then a list of actions. I see someone's laughing because they know this is some of this stuff that we're covering is true. <laughs> um, a list of actions, you know, where on the resume you may just have actions, but there's no rhyme or reason as to why. It muddles the, the unique story of your career development and the journey of your career. So it's just like persuading someone to see your point of view, to see your position, you have to create a compelling story as in terms of who you are and, and why that employer should, should really consider you. Any questions about what a resume is not? We have any questions from anyone? And Vicki, I know you'll let me know if any questions show up. I, um, I have the chat box open, but I don't want to be distracted by that either. And anyone can unmute if they do have a question as well. Feel free. Okay. Um, I don't have a question. I know that um, a lot of people are probably going, okay, what is a resume? I, I do. Um, can I just interject? Can I interrupt? This is uh, Mary Wim from the SoCal chapter. Hi, Mary. Hey there. Um, I just, I know you probably would talk about it. A lot of the chapter members in Southern California are recurring, meaning that their background might be a non-IT, non-engineering. So how, what should they put on their resume? Should they list a lot of their past experiences in non-IT, non-engineering uh, on their resume? So I need some help on that. Um, it's not clear to me when you're trying to find an IT cybersecurity, whatever, engineering job, do you list a lot of your previous non-IT, non-engineering, non-cybersecurity? So, so give, me, give me an example of someone doing a career to transition. They're, they're moving from what to what? Okay, so we have one person is from a medical field. Mm -hmm. So I don't know the details. Another person, I think she came from business and um, business background. So she really didn't do any IT or, or cybersecurity. And now we just have variety. I can't remember everybody's background. I think more of the people's background are more business, um, meaning that they may have an undergraduate in a bachelor's of mm -hmm. degree and things like that. Um, how, what would they, they're not, they don't have much IT, they don't have experience that's related to a cybersecurity. So I need some recommendation. Okay, um, so we're right. actually going to talk about that later uh, in the in the presentation, but I will definitely go ahead and give you some pointers. Uh, Great, thank you. In terms of, of the transitioning of, from, from a different career to a new career. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, I'm a looking lot forward of it is to driven, it. A lot of it is driven, Mary, by, and this is where it comes back to investing in yourself. Because people that are seeking to transition from one career to a new career, there are several things that they're going to have to do, not only actions that they have to take personally, but how they have to shape that resume. And, and those actions would be that they need to uh, 
look at seeking out projects in their current workplace that would allow them or enable them to get some hands-on experience um, in, that, in that new or in that space they're seeking to go into. That's one option. Another option is for them to do an internship somewhere. And so that internship may mean they, it could be paid or unpaid, but they have to keep in mind what the objective of the action that they're taking, where is going, what the end result is going to be for them. They have to keep that mission and that goal in mind. Another would be for them to get involved with a group, uh, with a group that is currently, um, it could be a professional association um, or a group designed for the industry that they're going into. And then obviously, um, getting that education, getting the learning that they need to become an expert as much as they can and learn as much as they can about it. The other thing is they could also build out a blog. And the blog would help them to kind of constantly be uh, you know, referencing that subject matter. They become a subject matter expert. You know, there are things that, that I often tell uh, clients in this space. There is, we can learn anything now. YouTube has enabled us. <laughs> Even my mother uses it. <laughs> to learn anything that we desire to learn. It is the greatest how-to that we can go and really build ourselves. And so the thing that I'm hoping, and particularly for people, whether they are retooling, they were laid off, I'm hoping they're taking advantage of this downtime to really enable themselves uh, and develop themselves with a new skill, a new area of expertise, because it continuously helps to increase their, their market value. It's no different than a company and most people forget to treat themselves like a company. What you see companies doing is what you should be doing for yourself to keep yourself marketable. That is extremely important. Mary, did that help you? Yeah, okay. yes, thank you. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm busy taking notes so I can share with the chapter members. So yeah, okay. I, I get it. All right, thanks. But. But there is a, a question. Just to get into the internship is very competitive. So internship still requires a resume, right? So um, unless it's not paid. So that would be something like even get in an internship. So I think what I heard is writing a blog, do some home project and- Volunteer. That's the other piece. Volunteer. In the okay, volunteer, yes. Nonprofits out in the community where you can go out and volunteer your time. Um, it could be that, and, and find a mentor. You know, find a mentor who is willing to take you under their wing and help to nurture and cultivate you for that role that you desire, that you're seeking. Thank you. So build a strong network in that space that can advocate on your behalf. And so what that means is, and, and, and now, cause you guys are getting ready to get some real wisdom from me that you, you, you haven't paid for yet. <laughs> but you have to be very strategic when you're building your network. Is your net, cause you, and you've heard this before, your network determines your what? Your network determines your net worth. So if you are desiring a particular career to make a certain income uh, that you desire that's, gonna, that's going to help you build out uh, the lifestyle that you desire, you need to make sure your network is reflective of that that not people that, that are not decision makers, 
that are not influencers. You need people that are pretty powerful hitters that's going to advocate on your behalf. Great point. Might mean you need to navigate in different circles. Okay, let's keep, keep it moving. We have an example here of a poor quality resume. Yes, this is a resume that was actually provided to us. And the thing we tell our, our clients that we're working with in this space, do not be embarrassed, just send us what you have. We have had customers where they were trying to improve their resume before they got it to us. <laughs> to get it in the, in the uh, position that it needed to be. And I said, don't worry about that, <laughs> what you have. That's what you're paying us to do. How many of you have seen resumes like this or your resume may look like this? Don't be embarrassed, that's why you're here. That is why you are here. I see that would be me, I've seen them, yes. Now, I want you guys to, I, I want you to think of something. If you were applying or if you are hiring manager of a multi-million or billion dollar company, because never get it twisted, everyone, that you are not a part of the core group of helping to build success in, in an enterprise, in a company. But if a hiring manager, if you were the hiring manager, you got a resume like this, and, and your position, keep it in mind, is very critical. All positions in an organization is critical as far as I'm concerned, because we're all connected. We're all connected to, to help make that company be successful. Why would I want to consider you for an opportunity? Why? This doesn't give me anything. It doesn't tell me anything compelling about, you know, what you are, you're able to bring to, to uh, my company, um, you know, the, the great things that you may have accomplished that, that really added value to the companies that you worked for. It tells me nothing. <laughs> and it presents, a presentation is, is not acceptable, it's not professional. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't, someone said it doesn't say anything of what they have done. Exactly. But yes, this was a resume. And this, this resume is an FYI. They, they are manager in this position. The resume we're looking at is a manager's position and they wanted to move into a director role. Yes. So I wanted to show you an example. Um, so let's go ahead and move to the next one. Um, let's talk about key resume attributes, because this is where the rubber meets the road in terms of some of the, uh, when you're building out a resume, some of the key things, and, and, and there's a couple of things I want to mention to you guys. What we're talking about today is not everything that we do in our practice to build out that resume. There is an art form um, for de designing and developing a high quality resume. But I'm sharing with you some of those attributes that we have found to be very instrumental for building out that high quality resume. What, what is not mentioned here is the content and what goes behind these key elements, these attributes, which is where the, um, uh, that's where the meat and the potatoes are really driven. So the name and job title is very important, the contact information. Um, there should be a professional summary, which summarizes you know, who you are, what you're an expert at. Uh, professional performance benchmarks. Um, that how many of you know what that means? No. <laughs> yes. 
What, what is professional performance benchmarks that you really see on a resume? For instance, if you're in sales, you could speak to how often or how much you um, attained with respect to a benchmark that was set by the company, say 100% sales, 150% sales over a certain amount of time. That's exactly right. So here's where people miss the opportunity to really um, advance their career and success. They don't track their performance benchmarks and they don't track their accomplishments. And if, you're, if you've had a, and, and, and oftentimes, when, because you haven't done that, when it comes to times like this where you need to get your resume refreshed or you are doing a career transition, you have nothing. Well, we come in and we, we kind of uh, implore you to, to dig deep. We have you go places you've never been before to do some deep reaching. Um, that's a part of our, our process. But the benchmarks are extremely important because that demonstrates your capabilities and accomplishments, especially what you may have done throughout your career or the company that you're working for. Your professional experience, that's, that's uh, your expertise, but it's not a job description. It is an area where you would, you know, speak highly of yourself in terms of what you are known for, that you may have been promoted into a new role, that you may have been a quick study after a short period of time. And then you start going into uh, things like, what problem did you solve for your employer? What action did you take? And what were the results of that? They're not looking for a job description. They're looking for meaningful things that you have accomplished in your career that can then be uh, value added to their enterprise. And more importantly, when you're shaping those things, um, make it very relevant to the position you are seeking. And we're going to get into about targeted resumes because I know the other resumes that are floating around out there. You are putting everything that you've done in your career and it doesn't align with the position that you're We don't know what you're applying for. We don't know the position that you're after because you, you're all over the board with your resume. Your technical skills you need to list those out. Um, you know, what platforms or tools or software uh, make it relevant for the position that you are pursuing. Your professional skills. Are you a problem solver? Are you a leader? Are you analytical? You know, what would those things look like? Your education. Now, your education, um, you know, the things that I would speak to you about that, if you are a recent graduate, you can put that at the top of your resume, your education. But if you are someone my age, don't put your education at the top. <laughs> your expertise is going to be more important. Uh, it's great that you have the education. Um, but for, for someone that's, that's very mature um, and they have a lot of expertise, your education can go more towards the bottom of the center of the resume. Um, you should list your certifications and training because what that demonstrates, it demonstrates that you are a continuous learner, you're a lifelong learner. And the certifications and training should be relevant to the position that you are applying for. There may be some that may be non-relevant, um, but if, if it's technical or professional development, you know, put that out there. If you are, um, if you have a cybersecurity certifications, what those are, list that. Professional development uh, certifications, 
where you've gone through some leadership programs, put that in there. What professional associations have you um, participated in as it relates to your profession? That goes a long ways. If you've written any uh, articles or publications, that, that really just ups the ante about your expertise. Speaking, that's not going to be for everybody, but you've done, if you are a subject matter expert in your space, that should be noted. Community, we all know what community is. That's your, your, that's your civic responsibility, your civic duties, your volunteerism. Um, that's important. And then your interests. Do you play tennis? Are you doing anything as it relates to uh, maybe even in your industry, you may have an interest in, in documentaries or, or anything like that. Um, I'm missing some stuff in the chat box. So let me see. If you're looking for a position, would you really make a different resume for each job you're applying? I'm going to get to that, but you're absolutely right. You, this is why people don't get called for interviews because their, as their resume is not clear and it's not a perfect red apple. For every type of position that you are applying for, that resume should speak to that position. It's just like going to the doctor. If you went to see your doctor and he examined you and he gave you a diagnosis that was all over the board, uh, what would probably be your first thought? What would be your first thought in seeing that doctor? Yeah, find another doctor. So what do you think that hiring manager is going to do? <laughs> <laughs> They're going to find another resume that speaks to that perfect red apple, right? <laughs> Somebody said he's confused. Exactly. <laughs> find another candidate. Exactly. And guys, you know, this is very simple stuff, but this is where we miss the mark in making the investment. We, we take for granted the power of a resume that we don't spend the time to invest in the resume in ourselves to prepare. <laughs> I see someone say, ha, 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 at Atlanta. <laughs> That's exactly right. A resume should be tailored to the job you're applying for because the company wants to know what you can do for them, as in what value can you bring to the company? That's exactly right. So here's an example of a high quality resume. It has the attributes that we've um, sort of talked about today. And um, this was a resume that we developed for one of our customers. Um, and this has mastered tremendous success for them as it relates to their career. And so this just kind of gives you an idea of what it would look like. It's pretty easy to flow. The flow of the resume is there. We design, We actually did design the layout of the resume for them based upon, and, and I will tell you as it relates to that, we actually um, spend time building out a profile and that profile is not just based on those attributes that you saw. There's a lot of deep provoking insight and information that we request from our candidates to build out a high quality resume. And we call it our uh, resume profile builder is what we call it. Two questions for you. Okay, let's see. Let me go back up. This looks like it, there's one, is it appropriate to have more than one page in your resume if you're entry to mid-level experience? So here's what I would tell uh, customers or clients. Sometimes it depends, well, there's, there's a rule of thumb 
you should not go for no no further than 10, 10 to 15 years. 10 years has been our cap. Um, the other thing, guys, that I want you to think about is that you have a different generation of hiring managers that are reviewing the resume. I'm going to go there about the generations that are evolving. We have our millennials and our Zen Zers now. And the way things look and laid out, they interpret differently. So that's the other reason with the resumes that we have designed, developed. Not only are we aligning it for the authentic you, but you have to think about the audience that's reviewing that resume. And so for the most part, uh, they don't like long and laid out. If you're able to do get away with two pages, that's great. The resume that you just saw uh, was someone that had been in the industry uh, for a, a, a while and um, they ended up going into three pages in terms of, of their background. But two pages is great because the people that are reviewing it, they're looking for the key things that's going to jump out to them that that's going to uh, motivate them to want to pick up the phone and call you in for an interview. So someone asked about entry to mid-level experience. I'd say one to two pages is, is definitely appropriate. What's the other question? What are your thoughts on including a small professional headshot on the resume and our text color blocks? I don't have a problem with that. Because once oh, the generation, sorry. the generation that, that they are very sociable, <laughs> Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, very. That are, that are moving up the, the ranks now, that are decision makers, they are much more sociable. <laughs> um, and so that is one of the things that um, we want to make sure. Uh, in terms of the photo or the professional headshot, <clears throat> My rule of thumb for that is to um, either go ahead and be professional or business casual. It depends on the role. And, and what I would say to you, for whatever organization that you are applying to, you should know what their culture might be. Right. You do your homework to kind of figure that one out. You know, would it be appropriate and and we know if most of us are in IT that's that's in this this webinar <clears throat> most of our folks are business casual or you know on level below business casual but at least business casual see somebody asked what about the ATS okay ATS what what is that applicant tracking systems what is it now Applicant tracking systems. Okay, applicant tracking system. That throw out your resume when it doesn't conform to what they expect to get. Okay, so what you have to do is, um, based upon what you have as your resume, there are two things that these ATS is how they work. You're going to upload your resume and it's going to pull information based upon the position that they're served. The, the keywords is what it is they're looking for. So obviously your resume will have to be built around the keywords. Mm. So uh, some of the things that you need to have, once again, this is why I say it's work in, in building out a high quality resume. You're going to need to know your current job description your future job description. That's going to help you identify some keywords. So that's very important for you to have access to those documents. Um, and then when we talk about certain uh, formats in terms of the ATS, you need to make sure that you're pulling, if it's an ATS where you can pull information or you're building information into their database, you need to do that. 
Just lift it from your resume and put it in there. Yes, it's work, but if it's the position that's going to get you to the income that you desire to have, you do the work. Let's see. Um, resume career transition qualities, we've kind of talked about that already. We talked about relevant work experience. That would be listed on your resume. We did a resume for an entry level person who had graduated from college. They actually had a strong internship background for the area in which she was desiring to go into for the position she was pursuing. And that's what helped her. Uh, we put that relevant work, because our other work experience, we made uh, the skills transferable based upon the profile that we had built out for her and the information she shared with us. But one of the things that we did, we put the relevant work experience at the very top, at the front. And then we went into her professional experience. So the relevant work experience for her were those internships. She had about three or four of them over a one year period of time. And that was relevant. Um, you know, we talked about work projects, education, sharpening the saw, internships, expand your network, volunteer. The resume qualities and building out the resume, you're gonna have a hybrid format. And so that hybrid format is, is gonna be a combination of your current role in terms of your accomplishments and problems you solve there, and then any other transferable things that you did in your current role that would resonate or align with where you're going into your new role. You will include an objective you need to indicate that in the objective, what you're seeking. You're gonna add the skills section, which for us, that's an automatic. That's already included. Update the education. What that means is hopefully you are going to retool in order to transition into that new career by getting some uh, certifications, picking up some classes, that's important and you're revising the employment information, which I've kind of talked about that. Were there more questions? Um, just a bit of discussion about, you know, the format again, but um, nothing, nothing yet. Okay. Yeah, people are still on the ATS. Right. So let me, let me tell you where the rubber meets the road, guys. This is where the, the top performers really get noticed. Don't rely on the ATS. Do the work. Build the network. Find out who you need to get to. Find the email address. And everything is out there if you're willing to do the work. And I'm back to the resume is the vehicle that is going to help you Secure the income that will provide you the lifestyle that you desire. If you're willing to do the work on the front end to get you into that position, it's worth it. I don't want you to think from a mindset that you have to rely on an ATS. You let nothing stand in your way between that and your income. Yeah. And so it's not going to take that much more time, you out there trying to figure out how to get stuff in the ATS, get it right, for you to research and find out who the decision maker is and get that resume in the right hands. Because what that's gonna demonstrate to them, what do you think that's gonna demonstrate to them? Even more value you put in. <laughs> that's exactly right. Grit, I love it, that's exactly right. Right. That's exactly right. All right, let's go into the next slide. Um, let's see. 
Two, to support your resume submission. Um, we're gonna go through these pretty quickly. The cover letter, that's important because it helps you get the resume and application notice. Your reference list, it's a separate list to upload with your resume. So if you were um, submitting, if you were making the initial outreach to the decision maker, because all of our candidates, what I'm sharing with you is what we tell them. Don't rely on a database to get your resume in the right hands. Do your homework, find out, and, and, build, and, and building that network. Remember your network defines your net worth. So you want to make sure you're connecting with the right people and don't be afraid to ask. Tell them what you're doing, you know, and always be resume ready. Have your resume on your, on your phone that you can quickly share it with someone that you might meet that might be able to either be the decision maker or get your resume in the right hands of the decision maker. Letters of recommendations, identify the best references that will help you get noticed or get hired. Transcript, employers may request a copy of your high school or college transcript, sometimes they do that. Your portfolio, um, your employer may request copies of your work that demonstrates your capabilities and you wanna be able to be prepared to provide them with that. Additional tools, uh, writing samples, uh, sometimes employers may place a high value on how well you write. You know, for those of us in IT, those, those requirements, you know, caption those requirements sometimes. <laughs> Being able to put some stuff together. Um, certifications, they may require uh, for certain professions, obviously in IT, uh, certifications is big. Um, and in teachers and in other industries, insurance, Let's see. Yes, I see someone says that they research on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> and it's worth it to have a paid premium subscription. Yeah, someone was asking how did they get to know who the hiring manager is and, and folks were responding, you know, LinkedIn, you know, but more importantly, like you said, do your homework. Do your homework. That's how you do it. The World Wide Web, there's a footprint now for everybody just about. And so you just need, based upon the division that you're applying to, you need to see who has oversight of that division and find out their email. You can also easily find out the email format for the company and shoot that email over or LinkedIn. Some final tips that I'd like to leave with you guys is I know we're at 158. Um, oh, I didn't even realize that. <laughs> yeah, I know time goes quickly. Let's go into it. Read, proof, read. Use the dictionary, guys. If, if you're gonna, here's what I'm gonna say. If you're gonna attempt to do this yourself, you know, you're gonna have to really work hard to make it happen. Or what most businesses do, thinking like a company, you can't be everything to everybody. Make the investment and have the experts do it for you. They know what to pull from you and they know how to wordsmith your resume to resonate with the hiring managers and to get them in a position to pick up that phone to call you for an interview. Resumes must be targeted for the position that you are seeking. Recruiters and hiring managers immediately recognize the perfect red apple. They go on the next when they see the perfect red apple and that's what they're seeking. That's why your resume can't be all over the place. Uh, already mentioned to make the investment and outsource if you're unable to develop a high quality resume. And, and resumes are an investment in your career and self. So now I'm gonna pause and, and see what questions you may have, um, which you have been asking questions along the way. And everyone, if you wanna unmute yourselves, you know, please feel free and ask a question. Yeah, this is question time. 
Does your company have resume packages? Yes, we do. And our packages include the resume. We can do resume cover letter. We also have a one pager resume that is more in line of a dashboard. When you go into the interview, uh, whoever you're interviewing, they may not have your resume on hand, but we create like a quick dashboard of who you are to, for that one pager for you to hand over to them. We also can do your LinkedIn profile because when you are in the market, your, uh, your profile should also align with, uh, you know, who you are so that recruiters and hiring managers can find you back to those keywords again. Were there other questions? Yeah, that's another question. Um, it's a long one. How do you organize soft skills and hard skills on your resume while keeping it clear and concise, especially when applying for a technical position? Usually soft skills are real, rarely mentioned. Um, you separate it in its own section and have it like a list. There are different ways that we do it. But, you know, the other thing, too, when we are designing and developing a resume, we're making it authentically you, but you're also having to create it in mind with the industry that you're applying to. What feels right for them. Great. Um, somebody's on the website and they're asking how to select the packages. You have to contact us for the packages. And what we do is we provide you with a, um, and I'm going to show you where to, how to contact us. Oh, it's hidden. This is how you can contact us. Okay. So we do everything from resumes, uh, your LinkedIn profile, we do bios. Uh, if you have your own company, we also do the business uh, resumes and profiles and, and bios and, and all of that as well. We just we just did a project for a company out of New Jersey where they wanted all the C-suite, all their professionals as well as their vendors, all their resumes and bios completed to be used for professional uh, business development. Well, thank you, Mary. Go ahead. Yeah, I just have a comment. Um, I know that my employers made it very clear your social medias, they look at your social medias stuff, meaning that keep it, you don't want to have a picture of yourself, you know, wild parties. I don't know. I mean, the, the, the recruiters do look at your social media profiles or whatever. So I just want to make a comment on that because my interns asked me, you know, what if somebody posted them a picture of they were partying or this and that. My, my advice to them, just, you know, don't post anything you don't want anybody can see or make it, pri make it private if you really don't want anybody to see it. Because I know a few companies, at least I heard, they do look at your social media profile. Yes. I, right. Yes, so they do. I don't, I mean, if I see a, a candidate with this wild lifestyle, you know, maybe I might choose a different candidate. I, I don't know. So That is yeah, true. And, and so let me tell you this, when they get the resume, guys, the first thing that the next thing that they do is guess what? Where do they go? Google search. There you go. They Google search <laughs> for your name. Yeah. And the first thing that normally popped up is LinkedIn if they're on LinkedIn and the other social media platforms. And they follow the trail. Always do a Google search on yourself and see what's out there. Yeah, because what happens is you know, for our youth that, that do have fun and stuff, they it, it just needs to be in moderation. Don't be out there crazy, embarrassing to parents and grandparents. If it's embarrassing to them, it will be embarrassing to your employer. <laughs> Uh, there was just one more question that I think we have time for, and that was, um, you know, if if you don't really qualify for all, okay, you know, 
we have to meet 100% of the qualifications. No, we don't. But this person asked, um, how do you tailor your resume for a job for which you might not meet all the qualifications? You have to, it's back to the, uh, the job description <clears throat> of the current role that you're in in your future job description. That future job description is going to help you shape some of the content, at least to get the concept of how you need to shape your resume to meet that position need. And so the other thing that you need to do, and, and this happens a lot, guys, sometimes you will depending upon the position that you're going into, have to tweak your job title to align with the position you're going into. And you have to talk to your reference and coach them. Hey, I'm going in, I'm, I'm seeking to go into this position. Here's the resume I submitted. I need you to confirm or validate that this is what I did. And let me tell you, if they are about wanting to help you in your career, they will do it. And if it is something that, um, and this is the other thing, people want to help people be successful. So in most cases, ask, the, the ask is what's the most difficult, not the fact that your reference will say no. They will say yes, they want to help you. And you're not going to list a reference of somebody that's not willing to help and validate your work, right? You want to use a reference that's going to help you get in the best position to be hired. Yeah, there's no more questions right now, and um, um, we everybody has said thank you, thank you, thank you, and how great uh, this afternoon's presentation has been. So thank you again. Um, oh, my pleasure. Uh, we appreciate. We, we have a team of writers to help get everything in the position that, and, and IT guys, is very competitive. Uh, I will tell you in the cyberspace because what I haven't shared with you, I also have a second company, and it is a pure cybersecurity company. Um, mm -hmm. He is an IT consulting, so we offer more services. But my other company is pure cyber. And, but I will tell you, we only engage the cream of the crop in our company to work for our clients. And whether it be this on a project or whether we're doing IT, you know, the professional staffing. <clears throat> so if that resume <laughs> is not tight, and that's the other thing. We do some coaching with you on how to interview, and we give you some specific tools that you will practice to master success in your interview. You get a lot when you work with us with the resume writing services because we want you to land the interview. We want to see you be successful. Thank you, Vicki. And thank and you so much for having me. Thank you, Tangela. You're welcome. Thank you everyone for joining. I will have um, the um, recording out soon. Um, it's, you don't need really the slides if you watch the recording because all the slides were there. So thank you everyone and enjoy the rest of your day. Hey Vicki. Yes. It's Brandy. Um, just so you know, like I emailed you as well, but I couldn't get in for the first half an hour and I don't know what the issue was. Um, but just so you're aware, because I may not have been the only one. Um, so I couldn't get in for like the first like 30 to 35 minutes. Um, <clears throat> I got in, I think around 140. Yeah, I saw. I, I don't know because we had opened the um, waiting room earlier. So Thanks for that. I appreciate that. I don't know what the issue was. I couldn't get in on my computer, but I was able to get in on my phone. So I don't know what the uh, issue is necessarily. And I was just on a Zoom meeting less than two hours ago on my computer. So 
I don't know, it's not a Zoom issue or a computer issue. It just didn't like this particular one. Uh, <laughs> when I tried to type in the passcode, it was saying that it was invalid, so. Oh. Um, but it is recorded, so please, um, I'll send it out and, and please enjoy as you desire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just going to give you a heads up that I couldn't get in. So I don't know if maybe that also means other people couldn't either. It was just telling me that the uh, passcode was invalid. So just Thanks. a heads up. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day. Um, really enjoyed the presentation. My resume is like four pages, but we won't go into that. <laughs> I just can't let go of the, you know, 25 years, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, you have to let go. That's Mine's okay, Vicki. Mine's three pages, so I know exactly where you're coming from, and unfortunately, <laughs> I've done that much stuff. I mean, that's the thing is, like, I was actually talking to a recruiter the other day, and she was like, well, she goes, you're one of those people where a one-page resume is never going to work for you, and I said, I know. <laughs> But it's just because I've been to too many places, I've done too many things, too many contracts, and just you get to a point where you can't fit it all into a one-page resume. And I mean, I can maybe condense it down to two, but it means pulling a lot of stuff out and rearranging. Oh, yeah. It just it doesn't. It doesn't, up... it doesn't mean pulling a lot of stuff out. It's just building your value differently. Yeah, but That's I have like I've tried to. I can do it for other people. Just don't ask me to do it for myself. <laughs> yeah, you, you I can, I can sit there and, and write people's resumes all day long. Just don't ask me to do mine. <laughs> yeah, you have to build your value. We did. We do doctors and and lawyers and stuff. And you know, doctors and lawyers they do the uh, speaking and publications, research yes. publications, and and I do that too. And, yeah, I've, and, and I've yeah. been a VP and I've been a director yeah. and I've been a department head, which is why I have so much trouble finding a job now is because they're looking at me like, okay, well, you own yeah. your own company, but you're looking for a full-time position. I'm like, yes, I am. And then they automatically just overqualified. That's the first words I always Well, you have to, like, you have to shape it a certain way because you're going in, you're going in and how you think it should be. You're not going in thinking about what the employer wants. Yeah. That's what that's where most people that try to do their own resume, that's where they miss the mark. They're they're so zoned in their own space and world about, but they're not thinking about what the employer really wants. They're really not. You don't know. I they're not. How would you know unless you know you, yeah. you connected with someone who can give you the inside story? Yeah. Yeah. But that's the typically the problem because I, I had the same issue with um, with our clients that were like the doctors and lawyers and, and you know, that caliber. And it, it really took a, a moment for them to kind of, they didn't get it until they saw the final product. And they were like, oh, because when they gave it to us, it was like 16 pages. <laughs> oh, good. I don't feel. Well, I ain't that bad. I, I, I got. I'm, I'm only three. <laughs> yeah. yeah, theirs was sixteen pages. <laughs> and, and granted, you know, when, when they go through, they, when they went through our uh, resume profile bill, because we get in deep, we're, we're getting to know you on a very intimate level to build out an authentic resume. And when we saw you know, the reason why a resume was so, nah, this, we're going to have to reshape it differently and be able to still send the, the, the same value, the value that they yeah. want need to see. But there's a way to do it, Brandy. I mean, maybe I'll have you redo it because I've had five different resume agencies try to redo it. And every time they try to redo it, no matter how we do it, it always ends up being two or three pages. And I've done, I've gone to four or five different professional resume groups and it just does not. Well, two or three pages is not a bad lint for a resume, Brandy. I mean, okay. I didn't say six, you didn't say 16 pages, two or three pages. Oh, no, I said, yeah, mine, mine's three, yeah. I think right now, the one I'm using, but, and it's just because like, I got to do all that stuff plus get, because I've worked in both Agile and Waterfall and everybody's, mm -hmm. you know, either on one or the other. And since I've worked in both, it kind of becomes very interesting, you know, because I kind of believe in a 60-40 ideology. I think you should do 60% agile and 40% waterfall. And I have found that it works, but, you know, you have to figure out which end of the spectrum they're on, whether they're That's waterfall exactly right. or agile. 
and then kind of show them why one does not necessarily work all the time because it doesn't it, it's not well, possible well, that's, to make that's my work. point you have to get the mission of the resume is mm -hmm. to the interview which you have to be the perfect red apple and you know yeah. a part of our coaching is the other things that you can sell yourself on once you get in the interview that's the other stuff that we coach you around and, and a lot of those interviews or behavior interviews we have tools to help you prepare and practice for that and every person that we've done a resume for and gone through that process they've landed the job and I'm seeing a whole bunch of chat things too. It seems that a lot of other ladies are having some of the similar issues to my issues, which is what I kind of figured, which is why I, I said anything to begin with is because I figured I can't be the only one in my shoes. And um, one of the comments somebody made was, oh, well, you know, it probably means they don't want to pay you what you're worth. <laughs> if they didn't see the value on your resume, that's the and other problem is... And if it's not a perfect red apple, they're going to yeah. move on. I mean, that's just the bottom line. This is why you can't create the resume. You have to be authentic in yourself in, in terms of the development. Yeah. But you have to remember you're creating for the company. Mm -hmm. So that you are that perfect red apple. You are the pick of the litter. You mm -hmm. can talk about some of that other stuff when you get in the interview in terms of that other value. But until that time, you are the perfect red apple. Angela. You have to be that, on paper. Angela, that comment was based on being told overqualified. And I know that I'm one that gets told I'm overqualified on a regular, regular basis. And that does mean they don't want to pay what they know I'm worth. So they just tell me I'm overqualified. But what that also means you weren't the perfect red apple. So did you, look, did you look at their resume? Did you look at their job description? Mm -hmm. And did you pull out, you know, your expertise to align with that job description? Oh, if I do every time. I, I actually do every time. I adjust it. The, the yeah, other I mean, problem is... The the, yeah, there's a reason why they're telling you you're overqualified because if there is a certain... Um, and the other thing, did you change your job titles? Some of your job titles, like I mentioned earlier. No. Yeah. I mean, if you want the job, you're going to do what they are expecting to see on that on paper. That's that's just the bottom line. You can get in the company and 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 do all the other stuff later, but you got to land the interview and sell yourself and be able to get the job. So you have to determine: Do you want to be adamant about? you know, reflecting everything you've done in your life, blah, blah, blah. Or do you want to be that perfect red apple so you can land the interview and get the job? Perfect red apple. <laughs> Truly. Absolutely. I'm telling you because I, I've been both sides. It's worked in my career. When I was in corporate, I knew what I had to do. I always paid. Yes, it's hard truth. I always paid. Before I became an expert <clears throat> in knowing about resume writing and what it took and understanding the process, I made the investment because I knew that I was not going to be able to adequately um, be objective and give it what that company needed in order for me to become that perfect red apple. And every time I made the investment, I moved up the ladder in my career. Wow. Hey, Tangela, I have a question. Do you yes. Know? And the same remains true for the people that we've helped and even my daughter. And I'll give you an example of my daughter. And I know we're over our time, but she's in cybersecurity. <clears throat> my daughter <clears throat> did an undergrad in pre-law her last semester. I don't want to be an attorney. I want to do cyber. <laughs> last semester of undergrad. I was like, <laughs> how do you think you're going to get into grad school with a pre-law degree to do cyber. I said, well, this is our strategy. You're going to do an internship. Your last semester, that's what you're going to do, all internship in this space. So she applied for, let me see, Apple, you know, some of the big boys, uh, VF Corporation, they chose her. Um, and, and yes, she was in the Air Force, and she'd done IT in the Air Force. 
Uh, but what I'm saying to you guys, every resume I've done for my daughter, she got the job every single time. Every single time. And it's about the perfect red apple. When she switched over to get that internship, as much experience as she's had, <laughs> before she got that internship, we had to make it the perfect red apple. Once she got the internship, she got into grad school, did cyber, got her master's. And then she was able to get a job with Accenture. Now she's with one of the big banks, and every time we've done that resume, she's gotten a job. So I'm just saying, guys, what's more important to you, <laughs> getting a job, getting paid, or being all about who you are and what you've done, well, wait until well, you get in the company and they realize that additional value that you have. But until then, resume, perfect red apple. <laughs> That's well, I was going to say, Tangela, on, on that note, I think the other thing that um, we have often abutted, and, and I'll say this because I'll, I'll say this, I just got uh, the 2020 Woman of Influence for Jacksonville. Um, and the other 20 recipients are all women who are in the tech industry, who are higher leveled. And what we have seen, and after talking to the other 20 recipients, is there's just a lack in Jacksonville of senior level positions. Um, and I think at this point, it will become less of an issue because um, we're doing that. Um, and because there's such a lack of them, not only is the competition ridiculous, but like um, what we have seen is they almost never pick a woman for the position. Um, you know, that is the other problem here in Jacksonville. And, you know, I'll level with you and say, it, and, you know, people don't want to hear it, but it's still the good old boys town. And I think the problems have continued to persist. And people like Crystal Rivers, who's talking here, you know, she had to move away to get a position. And, um, you know, and off, and for me, I would have been hired a long time ago if I was willing to move. Um, I'm not willing to move. Uh, I don't have the ability to move with uh, personal reasons. Um, I have family here who are literally dying of cancer. My uncle is right now. So at this point, um, you know, moving away is definitely not going to be possible um, while I'm doing care for him and care for my mother, my future mother-in-law who has been diagnosed with uh, Alzheimer's. She's in stage one. And so, you know, at this point, you know, moving away probably for the next 10 years is not going to be possible. Um, now, I know that they're doing a lot more with remote work and everything else. Um, so my question is, is if you're going to start pinpointing for remote work at a senior level or even, you know, at a managerial level, um, you know, is there something you particularly see where we need to do a redesign um, in that manner for uh, the new remote world? What I would tell you is <clears throat> the remote in terms of, it's really gonna be back to your skills too. And that's where the professional skills come in because the remote environment, and I'm not gonna assume, cause I've been in IT a long time. And so remote is nothing new for me. And I don't want to make the assumption that most of you that are on, on this webinar, the, that you're used to being in a remote world uh, because you're in IT. But what I will tell you, it takes a certain level of discipline and being able to engage with your teams when you work remote. So on some level, yes, Brandy, you, you would have to um, certainly highlight those things that would uh, make you more, make you valuable in being able to work in remote environments? Yes, to that question. Um, and that's where we would beef up things like your, your um, professional skills, um, maybe some of the platforms that have enabled um, your remote, your ability to be remote and maybe how you may have supported some of those uh, platforms. Um, 
but when you're talking a management level, it's going to be more to uh, the professional skills and maybe some of the things that you had to deal with um, from a remote scenario or a remote situation. Oh, great. I've, I've been working remote for probably two or three years. I mean, I have clients yeah. in Atlanta. I have clients in, you know, I have clients that are far away um, that, you know, I've had to resolve their website or their web portal or their, mm -hmm. I've even had to do their database from far away, all, but all good I, work in, I work in all Amazon good cloud, so mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Yep. Right. Yeah. So uh, great conversation and, um, I'm sorry, but I have to cut it off at this point. Um, thank you so much for um, um, being a great presenter. Everyone loved it. And we thank everyone for their time. Have a great well, thank day. Thank you, Vicki, for having me. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye.